First of all, guys, when the guy is coming, there is a thing that I like to do. It's like, eh, maybe, okay, pam. Oh! That's it, a simple pan. That's game over. Breathe. Release. Growing up in the school that I went to, almost all the fights that I had and all the fights that I saw started in this situation here, where the bravado was kicking in and we were squaring up to each other, getting into each other's faces. Now, I was an idiot for ever getting into that situation. I didn't realize that at the time. I thought it was the core thing to do. I thought it was good to show front, to show that I wasn't intimidated by the guy that wanted to attack me. Actually, now, based on what we know now as martial arts instructors and trainers, actually, that was a really stupid thing to do. In this video, we're gonna look at what you can do if somebody tries to get up in your face like that. There's lots of things to consider, and in this video, we're gonna unwrap that. We're gonna look at what to do when someone's right up in your face, giving you grief. Are you really capable of punching, of going to the nuclear option of a preemptive strike with no, with no point of return, with no return point? Because maybe you didn't punch at all in your life, or last time you did it, you were in the school. And what happens if you give your best shot and you fail, or you break your hand? So. Yeah, maybe here I'm putting myself in perfect striking position, but I'm, I am really ready to go for the nuclear option. That's something that we have to be humble with ourselves and honest to ourselves. Are we ready to do that? Ah, pam! Hopefully we are, but what if not? We can go grappling, yes, but I'm not a good grappler. I, I'm not, I'm not a good wrestler. And he's stronger than me. And maybe he's a better wrestler than me. That wouldn't be very difficult. So if I go grappling, maybe I'm putting myself in an even more difficult position. So guys, what would you do? Please put in the comments, what would you do? Okay, in my case, there is a pre preemptive thing that you can do that give you, I'm not gonna say a step, but half a step time to prevent the nuclear option of massive violence coming. First of all, guys, when the guy is coming, there is a thing that I like to do. It's like, eh, maybe, okay, pam. Oh! That's it, a simple pun, that's game over. He is not acting. I, I, am, I am a terrible mate because I knew he didn't have the growing guard and I wanted to show you Bust. the reality. This is a real channel, guys. Okay, it's not gonna happen again, so he's putting now the growing guard, okay, guys? So option one, one is here, Careful. either with the opel, opel pan, spreading, spreading the finger just in case I fail. Even if just the fingers goes to the growing, believe me, it's gonna hurt. Yep. Another even more powerful option is with the edge of your hand. Pam! That is boom. I'm not even gonna do it because even with growing guard, it's like I'm here, no me, sorry, boom, oh. there. Yeah. Honestly, God. Pam or pam. That's number one. It works. So that has worked with me a few times in my life. Okay, with drunken people, aggressive homeless people, wanna be bullies, that that worked for me a couple of times. Another option that worked for me like uh, in Spain, like in a summer, in a couple of concerts, it happened like the same to me in a couple of weeks and I did, I had to do it twice. It's like trying to calm down, make calm down and bam, there. It's a push in the neck. Okay, it's not as, you don't want to break his throat. It's like, hey mate, mm. take it easy. Like This is like a peaceful hand and then all of a sudden it's boom. When this happened to me, one was like a homeless person uh, he was on drugs or something, but that stopped him. Stopped him because he panicked. Mm. Because he saw me that I was ready to keep going, and then he stopped. And second time was a concert going, he was completely drunk, he smashed my girlfriend to the most speed. I mean, and then just, I did this, you know, what are you doing? Bam! And then the guy again was like, he tried to fight back, but he was too drunk, and, <coughs> and he couldn't continue. He has a hat, okay? Here's when I messed up in the past, like in COVID times, in COVID times, there was a guy doing this to me and I grabbed his uh, COVID mask and I pulled. <laughs> it didn't need anything because just break and then the guy punched, the guy punched me. Thank God, the guy, the guy was like the so at least he was the and he just punched and he, I mean, he didn't have any power and I have a very good chin. Mm. And then he punched me, clack, but then he, he got scared of, oh, oh, I didn't want to punch you, I didn't want to punch you. That stopped the fight, yeah, I got punched, but I had a good chin and the guy back off. So, somewhat works, but yeah, when you do this, then I need to be ready. The moment he comes back, I really need to do something else, okay? With the ones with the, with these ones are not very powerful, it's gonna give you a second, but if the guy is not backing up, then yes. Then you really need to find that will, that mindset to strike, okay? No need to say, in the UK is very common, the hoodies. I can pull down with the hoodie, let alone if the hoodie is on. I can just say, hey, man, you okay, brother? And then I can do something else, okay? Even if in here he's very weak, no matter how strong, no matter how strong, even if he pull up, 
he pull up, he's gonna, he's gonna make things worse. <laughs> Honestly, he's gonna make things worse. So in mean, here, if, if he's not backing off, then yes, I need to strike. To me, the most important one, this is the 50, 60% of the idea we want to transmit today, guys, is control the head. Try to control the head in a clever way. Ryan is way stronger than me, he's like 15 kilos bigger than me. If I do this, and he pulls like a bull, I'm not doing nearly any effort. He's doing all the effort. He's like, a, like an American football player. I'm not doing any effort, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, the human body is very weak in this point. Mm. It's very hard if you punch, but if you control this part of the head, the human body loses the balance, okay? So one thing that you can do is just move in there, and then that gives me at that millisecond to get the mental capacity to keep going if I need it too. Okay, another thing I can do is make, leave me alone. I can control in there. Again, Ryan is way stronger than me. When he's trying to remove my hand, then yes, then I can start punching. Okay, and then I have the back neck, which is very weak in a very easy way for me to target. Manipulation, obviously I can grab the eyes very easy. Like, okay, man, leave me alone. Here, I can manipulate the eyes. Okay, and then I'm gonna need the camera closer to us because one thing that I can do is to the noose. <laughs> Look his reaction, he didn't know this, he was in the script. The noose up, okay? Last one. Here. Bye. And then, Wanker. if he backs off, and maybe he's gonna back off if he's, uh, if he's not a, re a real violent person, maybe he's gonna back off, maybe he's bluffing, then you're gonna see in the eyes, believe me, even if you're an expert. But if he's not backing off, then yes, then I need to do something. So with this close quarter strike here, even the slightest movement from the defender and their head's going back. Even if they try their best to, to restrain, it's still going back, okay? If I put my body weight into it, I'm probably gonna break his nose and he's gonna go flying, okay? So if I just put a little bit of, you okay? <laughs> put a little bit into it, he's going the other way very quickly. So we're not in the playground anymore where most fights start like that. The reality is if somebody's trying to get that close to you, they're probably trying to headbutt you. Now we've done a video on how to defend yourself against a headbutt, and if you're interested in that, then you should definitely watch this next video. Okay, thanks everyone.